Hey everyone, this is Mike and today I wanted to take some time to talk about White Mage. Now I've been thinking about making this video so many times over that at this point I thought I had already made the video. Turns out I didn't, so today we are going to be making it. Now, White Mage has been a job that back when I first started playing the game, I never really enjoyed all that much. I've been someone that always was kind of a completionist, so I wanted to have all of my jobs at max level. This happened back when I started in Heavensward, by the end of the expansion everything was 60. Going into Stormblood, everything to 70, and then for Shadowbringers, everything to 80 as well. But back in those two previous expansions, Heavensward and Stormblood, I never really felt all that inclined to play a White Mage. There are so many different jobs in this game, there's only so much time for you to play all of these, so I would rather spend my time playing the more fun jobs, especially when it came down in Stormblood, that's where I played the most. Uh, especially when it came down to Healer, where I started playing Healer a lot in Dungeons and that kind of stuff. I would usually graduate towards playing uh, either Scholar or once Astrologian got the rework with Malefic being a lot shorter and stuff, Astrologian as well. Both of those jobs a lot of fun to play and they also had very fun interactive mechanics as well. Scholar has the Aetherflow abilities as well as the pets that you have to manage and Astrologian has their cards as well as a wide variety of off-global cooldowns. Whereas White Mage didn't really have anything. Yes, they did have the Lily system, but back then the Lilies were very unintuitive and they also didn't really feel all that great. Yeah, you got some cooldown reduction on one of your off-global cooldowns, which was pretty much always going to be a size, but it was it just didn't really feel that good, basically. Now, going over into Shadowbringers, White Mage is actually the healer that I probably play the most. Now, when it comes down to a raiding environment, I think I still prefer Scholar and Astrologian for me personally to play because of how they function. Uh, Astro is something that I really am enjoying right now since they made a change in 5.1, I believe it was. Uh, that's basically when I started playing it more. also raided on it for a little bit, like I think I did one or two clears on it. Uh, basically, I, I don't really raid on healers a lot, let me just put that clear. Um, so I have very little raiding experience on healers, but I do play it almost all the time in dungeons and that kind of stuff. Now, when it came down to my two favorite healers, we still have Scholar and Astrologian. Scholar is still my favorite by far to play in a raiding environment or in an 8-man environment, I'll just call it like that, because extreme primals and stuff also count for that. And Astrologian is a close second, because both of them are very off-global cooldown heavy, they have a lot of different resources that they can use before they have to basically go to their last resource, which is going to be GCD healing. Now, of course, you still use GCD healing a fair amount if you're a pleb like me at healing, uh, but when it comes down to optimization and that kind of stuff, both of these two jobs feel very good because there is a lot to optimize when it comes down to your off-global cooldown usage, meaning that you can spend a lot of your GCDs on damaging abilities, and that is something that is fun for me. Because more damage is more fun. Uh, of course, you do need to make sure that you keep your party alive, because damage isn't the only thing, it's not your main job as a healer, you still need to keep the party alive in the first place. When it came down to White Mage, they did make the very big overhaul to the Lily system going into Shadowbringers, and I think that is one of the main reasons why this is probably one of my most played healers now, especially in dungeons. Now, the reason why dungeons is because White Mage is just flat out OP in dungeons compared to the other two healers because of how holy works, uh, but I'll talk about that in just a second. Let's go back to the Lilies first though. So the reason why I think that the Lilies are so incredible now is because it is a resource that you have to manage, just like the other two healers have their resources, cards, the fairy, Aetherflow, that kind of stuff. And now that you have this extra resource to manage, there is something else that you're looking out for rather than just your off-global cooldowns. And it also doesn't feel all that bad for you to be using your Lilies, which are GCD heals, because they are free and they also refund you some of the damage that you have lost. One of the major things about what I feel so good about with the other two healers is you have so many different cooldowns to use to heal your party that you are not sacrificing your damage. Yes, you could say with Scholar, for example, every Aetherflow action used on a heal is not an energy drain, so it's technically missed damage. Um, but for the most part, you're not taking away from your GCDs that you're spending on damage to do healing instead. For Scholar, that's a pretty big one because your GCD heals are kind of crap anyways. Um, but for example, with Astrologian, you also have a lot of, of global cooldown tools that just basically make it so much more fun and feel like you're contributing a lot more damage because you are using mainly off-global cooldown tools to do all of the healing. And White Mage didn't really have that. Yes, you had a size, you had Tetra and Benediction, but when it came down to 
being able to weave, having a lot of movement available to you or something like that. You didn't really have those things. If you wanted to weave or move without clipping, you'd have to use either regen on your tank or something, um, or you would have to refresh your dot, which again, refreshing your dot isn't always the best thing. Yes, if you need movement and you don't have any other tools available to you, you can just do it because the dot on white mage is the only one that does front up damage, uh, or up front damage, whatever you want to call it. Um, so that's pretty good that white mage has that, which the other two healers don't, which is kind of weird, but I can also get behind it, um, because white mage doesn't really have the movement tools that the other two healers have. But it also makes it so that now, with the lilies being what they are, they have extra tools for movement and for off-global cooldown weaving, which already is a very big quality of life increase. Now, adding to that, White Mage has always been this very GCD-focused healer. All of their damage tools, well, most of their damage tools comes from GCDs. Most of their healing tools comes from GCDs as well, and they have very little off-global cooldown tools compared to something like a Scholar or an Astrologian, because those two are very focused around their off-global cooldowns uh, for healing and tools and that kind of stuff, whereas Might Mage has always been focused on the GCD aspect of it. And now with these lilies, you have a resource for you to manage, which is like those three lily, your lily gauge basically, you have free heals coming from them as well because they don't cost you mana and you are also refunded some of the damage that you have lost because they are still GCD heals, still staying true to that white mage identity of being the GCD healer. But now you don't necessarily lose as much damage from it. I don't know the exact numbers at the moment because I'm not quite sure if they changed it recently or not, um, but back in the day a Aflatus Misery, which is the Blood Lily thing that you get when you use three Lily actions, is the same as doing three Glares, or like in potency at least. Of course, you can like save your Misery to hit on the raid buffs and that kind of stuff, so it technically gets a little bit more damage. But in general, if you're just looking at the potencies, not taking into account raid buffs and that stuff, your Blood Lily is the same damage as three normal Glare casts. And if you add those up, you need four GCDs to get your Misery, which is basically you're missing out on the damage of one glare. Now, if you're looking at it like that, just numbers-wise, you'd be like, okay, well, using your Lily actions is a DPS loss because you're missing out on one glare. But, of course, you do get three free heals. They don't cost mana and they're instant cost. And those two things are incredibly important because it makes it so that mana management on White Mage is incredibly easy because you have Lucid, you have your Lilies, as well as the fact that you have Thin Air, which is incredibly strong, by the way. Uh, thin Air is just ridiculously strong, in my opinion. Uh, but yeah, so you have those three things, so mana management is really easy. And the Lilies are also a great movement tool or off-global cooldown tool if you want to weave in some other stuff in between. And they're also pretty potent heals. And then after you've used three of them, you turn them into damage, which I think is really cool because it makes it so that you still stay true to the GCD healer job, but you also don't necessarily lose as much damage from using all of those GCDs like you would on a Scholar or an Astrologian, but seeing how they have a lot of off-global cooldown tunes, they're usually not going to be GCD healing as much anyways. So I think it's a really cool balance right there. Now, the main reason why White Mage is the healer that I play the most right now is because of one simple fact. I mainly play healer in dungeons. I said it before, I don't have much experience raiding on it, doing it in extreme primals and that kind of stuff. Like, I think I cleared all the extreme primals of healer at this point. Uh, I've cleared most of the raids as well, not the new ones, but from Eden's Gate. Um, but basically, I don't really heal a lot of raids, but I do heal a lot of dungeons. And when it comes down to dungeons, White Mage is just so incredibly superior to the other two healers as well. And adding on top of the fact that it's a lot more fun to play now, with the lilies and all of the stuff I talked about before, makes it so it is a very easy choice for me to want to play White Mage over something like... Astrologian or Scholar. And the main reason why White Mage is so strong is because of Holy. Now, I know that a lot of people will be like, oh, but you're a healer, you don't need to do damage, blah, blah, blah. Which I guess is true, but still, I'm somebody that wants to contribute as much as possible to the dungeon run. I want to make it a smooth experience. I want to just get the dungeon run over with, because at this point, Expert Roulette, yeah, it's only two dungeons and you don't get that many new dungeons either through the patches. Uh, so it can get kind of boring relatively quickly, so I want my dungeon runs to go as fast as possible. And White Mage's Holy Spam is the most OP thing there is, if you compare it to what the other two healers have. Yes, I believe it is less damage than what Scholar has, but it has a stun attached to it. And the fact that it can stun enemies 
is so incredibly powerful because it makes it so that your tank doesn't need to use the same amount of cooldowns uh, as you normally would because the mobs are usually going to be stunned for about 10 seconds before your tank really starts to take damage. Now add on top of that that white mage plays well with literally every single invuln in the game. Uh, if a gunbreaker goes to 1 HP they don't care. A warrior you can wait until that home gang runs out before you benediction them. Dark knight oh, you don't really care about living dead because benediction and then of course paladin well. Paladin just gets invulnerable so that's really no issue either. But the fact that they have Benediction for all of those invulns is incredibly good because it makes it so that they can deal with those invulns a whole lot easier than other healers can. But add on top of that, that they still have a lot of other tools as well. So your mobs aren't really going to be doing damage for the first 10 seconds. If you have a really good party, like for example, everybody's pulling their weight, then most of the time the mobs are going to be dead about the time that your tank starts taking damage or starts taking real damage when they run out of cooldowns and that kind of stuff. Seeing how they're stunned, your tank can also delay their cooldowns by 5 or 10 seconds before they use them and then of course have them stay on them for a whole lot longer when they are actually taking damage from the mobs, meaning that they take less damage than they normally would if you were a scholar or an astrologian. And then add that together with the fact that you have Benediction, you have Tetra which is really strong as well, and then you have those free Lily heals that you can throw out and then transform into your Blood Lily makes it really strong. One of the cool things as well with these lilies is that you can use them out of combat. So for example, as you are running towards the dungeon packs that you're trying to like group up together, you can just use the lily heals for free on your tank, stack up your blood lily because you know that you might not need that many lilies to heal them in the first place because you have tetra and benediction available or something like that. And then you can just afflat this misery immediately after you stun the mobs for a little bit or something like that, which makes white mage so incredibly powerful in dungeons. And being powerful is just a lot of fun as well. There is a little bit of a power fantasy in there somewhere as well. But it just feels incredibly good to play right now. Yes, when it comes down to raids, I would still prefer to play something like a Scholar or an Astrologian because those jobs just speak more to me when it comes down to playing it in a 8-man environment. But when it comes down to dungeons, you'll very rarely see me play Scholar or White, uh, Scholar or Astrologian because every time that I play those in a dungeon, I just think back upon how much stronger my White Mage would have been and how much easier the dungeon run probably would have gone as well. But those are kind of like my thoughts on White Mage at the moment. It feels a lot better to play than it did in the previous expansions purely because of how the lilies work now. Um, because I think just that small change made it so much more enjoyable to me. And then if you look at it in, from a dungeon experience, like White Mage is just so strong compared to the other two healers because of the tools that they have available and especially holy how strong that stun is. I believe if they were to make it so that both Scholar and Astrologian would also get a stun on their um, like AoE tool, I'd probably switch over to Scholar again or something like that. Um, but right now White Mage just feels so strong, it kind of feels unfair compared to the other two healers when it comes down to doing dungeons at least. When it comes down to doing boss fights, I think all three are just fine. I think my first Savage experience where I cleared the whole fight wasn't White Mage, uh, this expansion as well. And I'll probably play some more White Mage in Savage or like Party Finder as well here or there when it comes down to Extreme Primals because uh, I still enjoy the job quite a bit. Not as much as the other two healers but definitely not really a job that I wouldn't want to play like it was back in Heavensward or Stormblood. It is definitely a job that I really do not mind playing and I actually quite enjoy a bit as well. Now, that's gonna be it for me. I hope you enjoyed it. I wanna thank you for watching. I wanna thank my Patreons for supporting me and I'll see you in the next one.